Dear students, today let us discuss about holoenzyme, apoenzyme and coenzyme. Enzymes are biological catalysts which speed up the rate of almost all biological reactions. Enzymes are protein in nature except ribozymes. Apart from proteins, sometimes enzymes also need non-protein parts that facilitate the activity of the enzyme catalyzed reactions. Thus, we need to understand those parts of the enzymes which are not protein along with their functions and chemical natures. Here in this topic, we will discuss brief idea about the apoenzymes, holoenzymes, cofactors, activators, prostatic group, and coenzymes. History and basic background. Before going to proceed all in details, let us understand some basic background about the history of an enzyme. By the late 17th centuries and early 18th centuries, the digestion of meat by stomach secretion and conversion of starch to sugars by plant extract and saliva were known, but the exact mechanisms by which this occurred had not been identified. It was in the year 1833, a French chemist, A. Payen, first discovered an enzyme diastase. A few decades later, when studying the fermentation of sugar to alcohol by yeast, Louis Pasteur concluded that this fermentation was carried out by a vital force contained within the yeast cells called ferments, which were thought to be functioned only within living organisms. In 1877, German physiologist William Kuhn first used the term enzyme, which comes from Greek word levin, to describe this process. Eduard Wagner submitted his first paper on the study of yeast extract in 1897. In his series of experiments at the University of Berlin, he found that sugar was fermented by yeast extract, even when there were no living cells in the mixture. He named the enzyme that brought about the fermentation of sugar as zymase. In 1907, he received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his discovery of cell-free fermentation. Following Buckner's example, enzymes are usually named according to the reactions they carried out, and the suffix ase is combined with the name of the substrate. For example, lactase is the enzyme that clips lactose. Or to the type of reaction, for example, DNA polymerase, form DNA polymers. The discovery that enzymes could be crystallized and allowed their structure to be solved by X-ray crystallography was first done by a group of scientists led by David C. Phillips in 1965. The enzyme was called lysozyme, which is found in tear, saliva, and egg white that digests the coating of some bacteria. This high-resolution structure of lysozyme marked the beginning of the field of structural biology and the effort to understand how enzymes work at an atomic level of detail. General Information Enzymes are biological catalysts which speed up the rate of almost all biological reactions. Except ribozymes, enzymes are protein. However, there do exist many enzymes which can be functional only when they are associated with non-protein part of the enzyme. In this condition, an enzyme is considered to be made up of two parts, protein part and the non-protein part. Protein part here is called apoenzyme, while the non-protein part is called cofactor. Apoenzyme. Apoenzyme is an enzyme that requires a cofactor for its biological activities. That is, an apoenzyme is an inactive enzyme, and activation of an apoenzyme occurs only when binding of an organic or inorganic cofactor. So basically, enzyme consists of two parts, 
the protein part called epoenzyme and non-protein part called cofactor. Here the protein part is called epoenzyme which is purely protein in nature but enzymatically non-functional. That is epoenzymes are unable to act as an enzyme. Thus in order to get it functional an epoenzyme need another non-protein part called the cofactor and thus finally the term holoenzyme can be used for this complex. That is a holoenzyme refers to a catalytically active enzyme that consists of both epoenzyme and a cofactor. Holoenzyme An epoenzyme together with its cofactor is called holoenzyme. A holoenzyme is a complete and catalytically active form of enzyme. Most cofactors are not covalently bound but instead are tightly bound. However, organic prostatic groups such as vitamins are covalently bound. So enzymes are made up of two parts, the protein part called epoenzyme plus non-protein parts called cofactor. This figure illustrates that a holoenzyme consists of an epoenzyme and a cofactor. The term holoenzyme can also be applied to enzymes that contain multiple protein subunits such as the DNA polymerase. Here the holoenzyme is the complete complex containing all the subunit needed for its activity. So DNA polymerase is a holoenzyme that catalyzes the polymerization of deoxyribonucleotide into a DNA strain. DNA polymerase is an active participant in DNA replication. It reads the intact DNA strand as a template and uses it to synthesize the new strand. The newly polymerized DNA strand is complementary to the template strand and identical to the non-template strand. DNA polymerase uses a magnesium ion for its catalytic activity. This figure illustrates the holoenzyme DNA polymerase which is a multi subunit complex holoenzyme. Cofactors Many enzymes require an additional small molecule known as a cofactor to aid with its catalytic activities. A cofactor is a non-protein molecule that carries out chemical reactions that cannot be performed by the standard 20 amino acids. Cofactors can be considered helper molecules that assist in biochemical transformation and their primary functions are to assist in enzyme activities. They are able to assist in performing certain necessary reactions where the enzymes cannot perform alone. Cofactors can be either inorganic molecules or small organic molecules. So, cofactors, which is the non protein part of an enzyme, could be either inorganic cofactors called activator or organic cofactors called coenzyme. This figure shows a flow chart of the two types of cofactors inorganic cofactors. Inorganic cofactors are also otherwise known as activators or common cofactors. For example, methyl ions and iron sulfur clusters, which breathe enzymes and substrate together and also may be part of the enzyme. Some enzymes cannot be functioned as a catalyst if a methyl ion is not available at the active site. There are many examples where methyl ions such as magnesium ion, iron ions, calcium ion etc which act as vital role in the activities of the enzyme. In daily nutrition, inorganic cofactors play an important role as essential trace elements such as iron, manganese, cobalt, copper, zinc, selenium and molybdenum. Also in many metabolic reactions such as in glycolysis for example, magnesium ion is used in the fast reaction step for conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. Before ATP is used to give ADP and one inorganic phosphate group, ATP is bonded to magnesium ion, which stabilizes the other two phosphate groups. So it is easier to release only one phosphate group. One example of an enzyme that contains a cofactor is carbonic anhydrase 
which is shown in the ribbon diagram here with a zinc cofactor which is acting as ionic cofactor or activator bound as a part of its active site. This tightly bound ion is usually found in the active site and are involved in catalysis. Another example is cytochrome oxidase where it uses cupric ion as metal ion activators for oxidation reduction reactions. Similarly, aldehyde oxidase uses molybdenum and catechol oxidase uses cupric ions. Here we can use the term metalloenzymes where enzymes requiring the metal ions. And it is also true that about one third of all enzymes are metalloenzymes. Coenzymes. Coenzymes are small organic non-protein molecule that carries chemical groups between enzymes. That is, coenzymes are organic cofactors. Coenzyme molecules are mostly derived from vitamins soluble in water by phosphorylation. They can be loosely or tightly bound to an enzyme and are also commonly made from nucleotides such as adenosine triphosphate and coenzyme A. It is a cofactor for the enzyme and does not form a permanent part of the enzyme structure. They cannot by themselves catalyze a reaction, but they can help enzymes to do so. In technical terms, coenzymes are organic non-protein molecules that bind with the protein for that is the apoenzyme to form the active enzymes called holoenzyme. Coenzymes bind to the active site of the enzyme and participate in catalysis but are not considered as substrate of the reaction. Coenzymes often function as intermediate carriers of electrons, specific atoms, or functional groups that are transferred and allowing the reaction to occur. It may be considered a helper molecule for a biochemical reaction. Coenzymes only provide a transfer site for a functional enzyme and they are not considered as a part of the enzyme structure. And since coenzymes are chemically changed as a consequence of the enzyme action, it is appropriate to consider coenzyme as a special class of substrate or second substrate or simply co-substrate, which are common to many different enzymes. For example, about 1000 enzymes are known to use the coenzyme NADH, that is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Some common examples of coenzymes include NADH, NADPH, and adenosine triphosphate, etc. Some coenzymes such as riboflavin, thiamine, and folic acid are vitamins, or compounds that cannot be synthesized by the body and must be acquired from the diet. The chemical groups carried by coenzymes include hydride ions carried by NAD+, or NADP+, the phosphate group carried by adenosine triphosphate, the acetyl group carried by coenzyme A, formyl and methyl group carried by folic acid, and by S-adenosyl methionine. In metabolism, coenzymes play important roles such as in group transfer reactions by ATP and coenzyme A and in oxidation reduction reactions by NAD plus and coenzyme Q10. Coenzymes are frequently consumed and recycled during which chemical groups are added as well as detached continuously by the enzyme. For example, ATP synthase enzyme phosphorylates and convert the ADP to ATP, while kinase enzyme dephosphorylates the ATP back to ADP. Coenzymes are usually continuously regenerated and their concentrations are maintained in a steady level inside the cell. For example, NADPH is regenerated through the pentose phosphate pathway. This continuous regeneration means that small amounts of coenzymes can be used very intensively. Coenzymes may be of two types, those which are tightly bound to apoenzymes and the other which are loosely bound to apoenzymes. So coenzymes which are organic cofactors are of two types, tightly bound prostatic groups or 
loosely bound coarse substrate. Prostatic group refer here are those tightly bound coenzymes, while coarse substrates refer to loosely bound coenzymes that are released in the same way as substrate and products. Loosely bound coenzymes differ from substrate in that different enzymes may use the same coenzymes in order to bring about proper enzyme activity. Through further research in coenzyme activities and its binding effect on the enzyme, more can be revealed about how the enzyme senses conformationally and functionally. Conclusion So in conclusion, enzymes are biological catalysts which speed up the rate of almost all biological reactions. Except ribozymes, enzymes are protein in nature. Some enzymes also need non-protein part for its biological activities. Here those non-protein parts are called cofactors and the protein part is known as apoenzyme. Holoenzymes is the apoenzyme plus cofactors and it is the active form of enzyme. Cofactors are of two types, inorganic cofactors or activators and organic cofactors called coenzymes. Coenzymes are again of two types, tightly bound coenzymes called prostatic groups and loosely bound coenzymes called co-substrate. Thank you.